There he is. You see him on your screen. He is Jack Chitterell. You may have seen a couple of commercials during the fall of 2021. He's uh, He's re he was a Republican candidate for governor. He came awfully close, I think two or three percentage points, with 1.1 more million Dems than Republicans. Uh, first of all, how you doing, Jack? Doing great, uh, Steve. I'd rather be transitioning our state government, but, you know, seven hours sleep and three meals a day with the family ain't bad. Real quick, let it, I know there, we'll talk issues in just a second. The biggest impact from that camp of that campaign on you and your family? Uh, exhilarating experience. It's great to get up close and personal with all of New Jersey. We enjoyed it immensely. Disappointed in the outcome, but not disappointed in the effort. You, you're obviously staying out there, and I'm not interested in the politics back and forth. You'll likely run again. If you do, and again, you can't predict where we'll be in 2024 and 2025, but that race is in 2025. Will the issues in your mind be the same issues that you ran on just a few months ago? Uh, they will be, Steve. I wish the governor every success. I want New Jersey to be a state where people don't want to leave. But I just have this strong sense that four years from now, we'll still be talking about the highest in the nation property taxes, the worst in the nation business climate, particularly for small business, and still a bloated, inefficient state government that's not responsive to the needs of citizens. Um, I also think we need to support our local law enforcement. Security and safety in the community is a big issue for people. And certainly our schools, we need to get back on track in teaching critical life skills and providing vocational training. And uh, the governor's starting to talk about property taxes a little bit, but you still don't hear him talk about these other kitchen table issues. Jack, do you regret any of the, we did an in-depth interview with you and it was very policy oriented and we appreciate you taking the time, but, but it was gave people a chance along with the other uh, interviews, particularly on NJPBS with our colleagues there. I'm curious, do you regret any position you took in that campaign where you said, you know what, if I had a mulligan, I'm a golfer who probably takes more mulligans than I should, uh, which is a do-over. Is there any part where you say, you know what, I, I should have handled that differently. I, just said, I should have said something differently there. The things that I regret about the campaign, and it's all on me, Steve, is we needed to make better inroads in the black and brown community throughout New Jersey. We did well there, but not well enough. And, um, and I need to put the resources in place to help make better inroads in the black and brown community. And I should have better deployed my lieutenant governor candidate, Diane Allen, who's a decorated champion for women's issues. Uh, Phil Murphy beat me up a whole lot in that area, and I could have better deployed Diane Allen. Those are two things I would certainly do differently. You know, uh, New Jersey elections are influenced by other things going on, particularly nationally. And you're no fan of Joe Biden. You want him to succeed, but you're no fan from a public policy point of view. But I also remember asking you a lot about Donald Trump. You can, people could say, oh, that's in the past. And I remember you saying, I only want to talk about state issues. But, Jack, you're a national figure in the Republican Party right now. And where people are on Trump, and I don't just mean Trump, I mean, but Trump's saying that the 2020 election is a lie, that Biden shouldn't be the president, that two-thirds to three-quarters of your party thinks Biden, Biden's not really the legitimate president. You don't believe any of that stuff, A. And since you don't, and you believe the election was legitimate, how do you engage those in your, par in your party who believe the whole election was stolen? Uh, by just going out, reminding them what's at stake, our future. And the best way to address that is with a gubernatorial election. And so I've said from the very beginning that Joe Biden is our president, and uh, there may be those that disagree. But listen, when you're running for governor, it's all about New Jersey. And listen, Steve, I appreciate the kind words, but I don't think of myself as a national figure. I think of myself as a lifelong citizen of this state who's got very specific ideas on how to fix this broken state of ours, and that's what I'll continue to focus on. So let me try this. Um, people take different things from the election. The governor has said, and we look forward to having Governor Murphy talking policy issues uh, as well in the near future, but the governor said, you know what? People say I should be moving more to the center, and the message was we're too progressive, we're too far to the left, the Democrats, and they disagreed with some things he was doing around the pandemic. But you know what he said? He said, you know something? If we didn't have such progressive policies that we succeeded in in New Jersey with me as governor, um, I wouldn't have won. He takes a very different message than I believe you perceive in this election. Go ahead, Jack. Hey, listen, all I know, Steve, is that our message resonated and uh, this was a very, very close election. I was in it to win it. And history told us it was going to be close. But I don't think it's any surprise that all of a sudden the governor in his state of the state was talking about things like property taxes the kitchen table, common sense, and not increasing taxes. 
He's talking about the affordability crisis in New Jersey. I think that's all a result of the election. So, yes, I lost, but that doesn't mean we were unsuccessful. I asked you about child, child care last time. I'll do it again because we have an ongoing initiative looking at affordable, accessible child care, reimagining child care. Real quick, 30 seconds on the connection between affordable, accessible child care, um, to talk about affordability, and people being able to work. Absolutely. This is a critical issue, particularly for those of the lower income levels. And um, I would go about pre-K in an entirely different way that he is to help address this and making sure that there's tax credits for those that have child care expenses. Definitely an important issue and part of the whole affordability crisis in New Jersey. When you speak about affordability, Jeff, are you open to the idea of mandating that certain very small communities that have their own police department, fire department, board of education, superintendent of schools, et cetera, et cetera, 567 municipalities, if that's the number, I don't even know what it is, but it's in that neighborhood. Are you, are you for, I know you're not big on mandates, uh, but are you for, hey, listen, you got to consolidate because local government costs too much and that has a lot to do with property taxes. Can't blame all that on Murphy. Go ahead, Jack. Hey, this state loves its home rule, Steve. You know that. And I would advocate for it. I would encourage it. And as governor, I would strongly incentivize it. But I've learned the hard way, having served as a council president in the borough and a freeholder director in Somerset, that's a home rule decision. And people have to make that decision. What I've always said that I'm specific to the property tax crisis is property taxes are high for two reasons. All the duplication of services, that's your domain at the local level. And the way we fund schools, I'll take care of that in Trenton. So I'll incentivize regionalization if that's what you want to do at the local level, and I'll fix property taxes as best, as best I can with a new school funding formula. Real quick, 2022, small business picture in the state of New Jersey. One-third of those businesses have been lost since the pandemic, two years in plus. What do you see for small business in New Jersey this year, 2022? Let me tell you what I don't see. I don't see tax incentives to help spur small business uh, nor do I see less regulations with regard to business startups and business operations. And that's what Main Street definitely needs, desperately needs, in light of the pandemic and in light of their competition with things like Amazon and the big box stores, who Phil Murphy seems to be uh, more inclined to be supportive of. So you don't believe those grants and loans are helping those small businesses? You talk to those small businesses, it's way too bureaucratic, Steve. Talk to small business owners. They either don't know the programs and those that do say it is way too difficult to get their hands on the money. Uh, it's been way too bureaucratic, way too much red tape. Unfortunately, we're kind of used to that here in New Jersey. You've been listening to and watching Jack Cittarelli. He ran for governor in 2021 in the great state of New Jersey. Probably going to do it again. And we'll have a whole range of discussions around public policy that uh, impacts you and your families. Hey, Jack, speaking of families, best to you and your family. Thanks so much for joining us. Many thanks, Steve. Always great to be with you. You got it. I'm Steve Adubato. That's Jack Cittarelli, and we'll see you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by RWJ Barnabas Health, New Jersey Sharing Network, the Turrell Fund, supporting reimagined child care, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, Johnson & Johnson, NJM Insurance Group, Operating Engineers, Local 825, Eastern Atlantic States Regional Council of Carpenters, Fedway Associates, Inc., and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State, and by Employers Association of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by ROINJ and by Insider NJ. I'm very grateful that I'm still here. That's me and my daughter when we went to celebrate our first anniversary. With a new kidney, I have strength. They gave me a new lease on life. I'm still going everywhere and exploring new places. Nobody thought I was going to be here. Nobody. And I look forward to getting older with my wife. That's possible now. We're transforming lives through innovative kidney treatments, living donor programs, and world-renowned care at two of New Jersey's premier hospitals. They gave me my normal life back. It's a blessing. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together.